Hi everybody, I'm Groggy Dog, and I'm gonna take you on a quick tour of my small house in the goblet before uh, 6.1 rolls around and I try and get a new house. All right, so welcome to the goblet. I think the goblet is a really underrated neighborhood. I also happen to have uh, what I think is one of the best plots in the game. Uh, right next to the waterfall, right next to the pool. You see we got those Valenciennes decorations right now. Got that lovely waterfall next to us. Um, I, you know, I hear a lot about the goblet and I couldn't be happier in this spot. Uh, so on the outside, I've got some nice purple touches and I'm mostly just making use of some seasonal trees. Uh, I'll replace those without the snow cap ones here pretty soon. Um, and a little market that I keep over here, kind of hidden behind this tree, which is overlapped with the well there, uh, as well as my retainer. Uh, but without further ado, uh, let's head inside and take a look. Okay, so here we are inside my house. Uh, I want to say that almost everything in here was done the legitimate way. Only a couple things I kind of glitched, um, but pretty much everything is done as it's intended. Uh, so right away, we've got this kind of nice canopied area with uh, some of the, the wooden accents. Um, I've got a bread basket pushed up against the window to kind of block out the light, some herbs in the back, and then two NPCs, uh, and then a nice little staircase leading up. And then up here in the top, we've got some tabletop items that, again, I didn't glitch up here. These just go up here naturally uh, to kind of show off, uh, you know, like a, a storage loft or something. Uh, from up top, you can see a really nice view of the windows that I've got over here. Uh, these took quite a while to place and get right. You can see with that angle, I've just got a partition at a 45 degree angle. Uh, lots of plants, lots of windows to kind of give it a lot of very nice light. Uh, this right here, this portrait, I think is the only thing currently glitched in my house. I did do the partition glitch trick to get this uh, placed correctly. It's actually kind of difficult to get something right on the fireplace. It's actually just a little bit outside the fireplace uh, because you have to get it far enough away from the wall to stick, uh, but not so close that it automatically goes back to the wall. Uh, and then over here, we've got two tables. These tables alternately have food or triple triad boards on them. Um, right now we've got uh, some Christmas themed food and the triple triad boards. This is uh, serpent here, here as well. Once we head over here to the right of the fireplace, we get to the stairwell. Got some nice, again, uh, some more of those standard windows um, and uh, plants, books. Uh, the Aorizon Lantern is one of my favorite things in the game. Uh, I wish more people would use it. All right. Now we're going to come down to the study and the bedroom. I've got my onion crew up there, as well as the orchestrian box. So right here is going to be the bedroom. We'll head in here first. Pretty normal in here. Got my nice pet goldfish. Uh, in lore, my character uh, is you know very heavily involved with the twin adders, and so I've got his ka and his uniform uh, you know at the ready for whenever he needs it, as well as a reminder of the uh, the twelve wood since he's here in Ulta. We're using the serpent armoire, a nice little hat. Uh, using an empty picture frame as a mirror. And then we've got a pretty standard bathroom over here with a stool and a seat combined to make that a uh, lovely little toilet. And then we're using you know, the shower head plus the bath to, to make a nice little shower right there. It's just a very simple partition to set it off plus the white flooring. And then once we head outside the bathroom, you'll see back here I've got a full library. I'm really happy with how this came together. I was worried that it would feel cramped in the small house, but I really wanted to demonstrate how much you can actually do with the space in a small house. Uh, so let's start up top. You can kind of see there is a little bit of an awkward gap between the wall and the bookshelf, but it's mostly not noticeable uh, if you play your cards right. So we have floated the, the lofts here so that there is some small book space up here. There's uh, tabletop items up here as well to suggest that people have been studying reading. There is a little bit of, you know, clipping, but for the most part, I was able to avoid that. Now, downstairs, you can see um, a few different things. Let's head back down there. You can see a few different things down here. First of all, I've got this nice little table. Uh, I really wanted to make it feel messy, and so I've got a bunch of books and tomes and papers overlapping it. I change out what we're looking at on this table depending on what we're doing in the game at the time. So I've had things from the uh, the weapon subplot and a few other items. Uh, obviously, this one is from the Endwalker location. Got some more uh, books. I really wanted to set my NPCs like they were, you know, 
active participants in the house, so they're over there currently choosing a book. I've got the second fireplace, and then one of my favorite parts of the house, I've got my reading nook over here. I really love this chair. I think you can dye that top part a few different colors, but I love that red, how it offsets uh, sort of naturally with the lighter red of the chair itself, plus the candelabra giving you some light back here in this quarter, and a nice big stack of tones. Uh, and that's it. Thanks so much for coming on this very quick tour of my small house. Uh, it's been super great, and we'll see if I am either going to remodel or hopefully get a, a new space in 6.1. So thanks for coming along.